in the 70s, board games and improv theater had a baby, and it was called the role-playing game. These games allowed a generation of kids to live out their dreams of slaying dragons and saving kingdoms, all while sitting in their bedrooms and basements. Today, gaming has moved into the cultural mainstream, and role-playing games are back with a vengeance. Join us now as five of these former kids come out of the basement and onto the internet to experience adventure, mystery, and obscure pop culture references. It's time for Roll for Combat. Hey everyone, welcome to Rule for Combat. I'm your GM and host, Steven Glicker. And in this week's episode, the boys continue to battle the big bad boss. But this is the week that things take a dramatic turn. Things change, new rules are invented, and chaos ensues. So this is it, everyone. There's only three episodes left after this one. Three episodes. And the Dead Sons comes to an end. What is coming out after that? Well, I can tell you right now, next week you'll be able to listen to episode zero of Three Ring Adventure. That is going to be launching next week. I'm not exactly sure which day yet. And if you're on Patreon, well, you already listened to it. Anyone with a $5 Patreon or higher gets it a week early. So that comes out to the public next week. That is actually a different cast. That's going to be the same cast as The Fall of Plague Stone. As for this cast... This cast is in a very different podcast that I can't quite announce yet because I actually don't have enough episodes to put out yet. There was a lot of scheduling mishaps and issues, and I like to have at least, I don't know, four to five weeks worth of episodes at the bare minimum in the can for exactly this purpose. Because if I actually put the episode out, I would have only had like two or three episodes out and then I would have stopped. So I need to get more episodes recorded before we can actually start that one. And I can't even tell you the title yet because I gotta talk to Paizo. I actually have to figure out what's going on with the show because we're doing all this new stuff that's really never been done before. I will say I got the logo. The logo is amazing. It is a cool, cool logo. I will probably, hopefully, be able to put that up by next week. I should have everything squared away with Paizo and have this show all worked out. And so next week is when I can start talking about this new show. I was planning on having this show start at the exact same time as Three Ring Adventure, but it's not going to happen. It's going to have to start a few weeks after, but that's okay. So two new shows, Three Ring Adventure and The Mystery Show. Three Ring Adventure will have the Fall of Plague Stone cast, minus Jason, Jason McDonald is actually going to be on the new show, plus other new people. So look for that very soon. So next week, you're going to have three podcasts. That's right. You will have Fall of Plague Stone, Three Ring Adventure, and Dead Sons. That's a lot of podcasts, but it's only for a very short period of time we're going to be doing that because there's only three episodes left of Dead Sons. And I think there's only three episodes left of Fall of Plague Stone. So that's it. They're going to end on the same week, which is really weird if you think about it, because the Fall of Plague Stone started in like approximately August and then Dead Sun started like two and a half years ago. What's the chances that they end nearly on the same day? Really strange. But you can transition right into the new shows. As for what's going to happen in this episode, I'm not going to spoil it. We're going to talk more after you listen to this week's episode, but it's a doozy, a real doozy. And if anyone has questions about this episode, hit me up on the Discord and I'd be happy to explain what's going on. But anyhow, let's get to this week's show. Last we left off, you have been storming the bridge. You have been fighting wave after wave after wave of creatures. However, the undead lich who has been flying around, who's invisible, who has a 50% mischance, who's been throwing fireballs at you, 
every single round has been slowly kicking your asses. Mo is nearly dead. Akiro is half robot, half demon devil, and he's very close to dead. And Tuttle, Rusty, and Hiroji are actually still okay. But for how long is the big question. Right now, Aeon Tuttle is up. Aeon Tuttle is so far away. And although he's not injured physically, emotionally, Cheddar still just died recently and is injured inside. What do you do? I have a bit of an odd idea. Jason McDonald is playing the Ahsoki mechanic, Tuttle Blacktail. I'm going to try to, since I can't hit him anyways because he's invisible, I'm going to try to change the dynamic of the fight a little bit by getting, you know, kind of getting him to come to us. So I'm going to head for the console in the middle and see if I can get into the command structure of the ship. Very good. You may do that. Time, which I'm assuming is on the center podium. You approach the center podium, and on there you notice a very strange-looking command key that is emanating dark energies. And you notice that this is, well, definitely where he issues his command to the, uh, the ship. Dark energy, huh? That sounds a little dangerous, actually. Um... I think I even have a picture of what it looks like. Really? There's a there's concept art of the button. That's good. John Stats is playing the Vesk soldier, Mo Dupinski. So there's concept art of the button. That's awesome. Seth Lipton is playing the Lashunta operative, Hiroji. <laughs> I have it. I have it. Hold on. I'll show That's you. really oh. funny. The big, jolly, candy-like button. All right. That is what it looks like. Look at that thing. It's covered in... It's like a perfect synergy of bones and technology. Uh, that's... What is that thing? Um, that's odd. Chris Beamer is playing the tiefling technomancer, Akiro the Just. Looks like a shirt. All right, well, I'm uh, going to try to see if I can wow. jack into it. Press the button. Press <laughs> the button. Bob Marquis is playing the human envoy, Rusty Carter. Press okay, you, the button. Um, you, well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. How about this? <laughs> Why don't you tell me what you are trying to do, and then I will tell you what the role is. You could definitely but, but, jack but, into but, 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 it. I was going to use my data. I was going to use my data jack to try to connect. Yeah, you could definitely, you can do that. You can use your data jack, and then what are you going to try to do while, while you're in there? It looks like a very goth Game Boy. Um, what am I going to try to do? I mean, I, there's two possibilities. Number one, see if there's any sort of security systems that I could maybe, like, focus on him. The other would be to actually try to complete our main mission and try to take control of the ship and do something to the ship. Well, if you want to do something to the ship, that would be... What could you do? Well, you could do what you normally could do. I mean, you don't need to be a captain or an engineer or a gunner. Or a science officer. I don't know if there's anything you need to do. You can move the ship if you wanted to move it. Um, you can you can use external guns in here. There's nothing to engineer. There's nothing to captain. There's nothing to science officer. So you could probably just move it. As for internal security, that would be a fascinating thing. So it's either pilot to move the ship, or uh, I would say. Um, Computers are engineering to see if there's anything you can like focus on this guy. If I'm gonna possible. take one one round to try to see if there's any sort of internal security that I could use on him. Okay, you can do either one. I'm gonna do engineering. I mean, engineering or um, computers. A, not a great roll. You spend your time jacking in, and although you definitely do not have access to security, something fascinating does happen when you uh jack in you realize that this is a command key for the primary computers on the empire of bones and this gives you authorized access to any computer on the ship including the engine sensors weapons of the ship so although you failed this check maybe in time you could actually override it and do something, but it looks like this is literally what gives you access to everything. That's your turn. Saravox sees this. 
suddenly you become his main focus <laughs> by taking over his command center. He does not oh, seem very happy about that. And he looks at the mouse taking over what he has. Uh, let's see. What shall he do? What shall he do? Give me one second. He's still invisible. For now. He looks at you, Mr. Tuttle, and says... Of course, he's, he's invisible, so I can't see him looking at me. But exactly. Okay. You can't see any of this, but... Uh, Are you uh, sure he's invisible still? I yeah. thought he manifested it, it, to do something. Does, no, no, no. It does he's, only last one round per level. Just saying that. Yeah, yeah. It's only one round per level, and we are up to round uh, 10. About to start round 11. So, the only one who can see him is me. Kiro, and that's it. And he sees uh, Tuttle fooling around, and... He is furious. It's like, you no touch candle. <laughs> That's right. All Fair. right. Put the candle back. Good. He fires his arc pistol at Aeon Tuttle. Oh, but it only does 10 points of damage because you're immune to electricity. You piece of crap. He's resistant. All right, he hits you again. He hits you twice, um, but only does 23 points of damage because you have the electricity resistance, and he is furious. And he's like, oh, how dare you, impudent. Akira is up, and Akira is still turning into a robot. Which of these orbs are mine? I forgot. The two to the north? The two blue green ones are yours, and the one uh, one to the west that's 10 feet from you is controlled by him. He didn't move at this turn. Okay. I, I can see him from where I'm at, right? You can see him. He's flying. He's near the ceiling. He's towards the end. There's like a curved uh, section in the corner. He's about as far away as he can be. All right, so as a move action, I'm going to move my um, my most northernmost uh, acidic cloud to uh, get as close to him as possible. It moves 30 feet. Okay, so that moves there. It's almost to him. Yep. And I say, witness me. This is where he is. And I do plan B, and I magic missile him. Okay. But I only get two missiles. That's correct. Oh, that makes right. him so angry. Uh, what level am I? Six level? So it's six, eight. Fourteen points of damage. Pretty good. But hopefully that's, if the missiles fly in that direction, they can uh, hopefully they can see. For a split second, see, see, where sort of see where he's at. Yeah, so it's like... Yeah, yeah, it gives, a, it gives a location. Uh, at the end of your turn, you do give me a fortitude save to have <clears throat> the damage. <clears throat> All you do, that's all you get. It just keeps going until it runs out or you die. Please run out. You have to, you're not talking like a robot. Remember, you must talk like a robot. Oh, 18. 18. Oh, I'm 18 fine. 18 is not even close enough. Really? Wow. It's got to be close. DC is 23. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> wow, you missed my five. Oof. 11 points of damage. You are about to die. <laughs> We have uh, Cheddar again. Cheddar's back. Actually, I've been wondering about this. At his funeral, do we describe him as a robot demon or a demon robot? I, I want to. I'm not a demon. I'm a devil. How dare you? Yeah, I'm sorry. A difference. Robot You're devil. A robot. Or a devil robot. I want to make sure we respect him at his funeral. I mean, let's be honest. Bleep, bleep, blop. I am a devil, not a demon. I am a ghost pirate. <laughs> demon does not compute. Devil, devil. Yeah, devils are lawfully. Okay, so I, I seem to be the only one doing damage. Everyone else is sort of running around like. Uh, oh, he's, as a move action, by the way, you see him. He's nearly completely healed. Like as quickly as you're doing damage, oh. he's doing the damage. All right, uh, I move over to here. I uh, tap my uh, the the communication item in my ear a couple of times, irritatedly, as I move over there, and then I say in common, not Eoxian, just to make sure that you know the enemy won't understand. Guys, we're doing fine. Everything's okay. The second team is almost here. Just make sure, like we've been doing, that we keep the entryway open and clear of the enemy. Mm, I'll add D6 plus 2 to that. 
All right, so 38 bluff on that one. Not my best. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Hiroji's up. Hiroji. Oh, boy. All right, so uh, is this the 11th round or still the 10th? This is around 11. All right, so my cloaking field, I am now naked. My cloaking field fades out out of energy and begins to automatically recharge, recharging every Correct. one round for 10, for 10 minutes or minute or whatever it is. Uh I, I am visible. I cannot do my hide, shoot, hide, and remain invulnerable and just do damage and never, ever take any trick anymore. I'm scared. Uh, I need to mm. do... Uh, I think I do. I think I have to do a holographic clone and at least give myself some some protection. Are you are you casting mirror image? I'm casting mirror image. Uh, three, 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 three times per day I can do it. All right, so I cast mirror image. Holographic clone. I get three images. Or is it three or three plus one? <laughs> Plan A. It's three. It's just three. Plan A. <laughs> you get three images. Okay. Three images. And uh, I believe that is a standard action. It is. And now for my move action, I run and hide like a little baby. I'm going to run over here and behind the, behind the and hide behind the uh, stealth behind the uh, pedestal there, the command pedestal. And, oh, uh, my God. <laughs> and I, I, uh, and I, t I take ten on that roll, so yeah, it's, yeah, you so it's a thirty something. Uh, Mo, you know, you remember? I don't think you can talk, right? I think you're like uh, uh, you're flat footed, yeah, you're off target, you're mute, yeah. and your hay circuit is up. By the way, because it's been a billion rounds. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm. That's fine. I was going to take a uh, which magic. A siesta, a mark, a mark three health serum. You might want to give it to uh, Akira because he's I gonna die. Gave him one. He's got one. He's just oh, okay. not using it. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a three. I don't yes, you do. Yeah, oh, do yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, didn't you hand me one? Yes, I did. Uh, I so that's it. in my hand, so I should just do that then. Yeah. I thought you used that. I used one. Um, I had a whole bunch. I bought. That's, no, I thought. That's I thought, all I spent I my money Akira. on. Let me look back at the log. You have twelve Mark Ones, Akira. So you got a lot of those. I know, I do, I do, I know that. Yeah. But okay, so Mo, by this app, by this program, it shows Mo still has two health serums. Mark threes. That's correct. Mark threes. That okay. Yep. All right. So I'm going to take one, and I believe okay. that's D, huh, D five times eight or D eight times five. Is that right? I'll look it up. I'm just I'm taking it off your sheet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm checking the log to see what I rolled. I it's sixty-eight, but no pluses. Okay, no so pluses. She's sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. I can do that. All right. Oh wow! Oh, Decent roll. Decent roll. I'll Twenty-seven. Take Twenty-seven. Yeah. Pretty good. Oh, that's a. I'm happy. It's not a bunch of ones and twos. I am so happy. I can't. Sorry. Aeon Tuttle is up. He realizes that, hmm, this is getting interesting. All right, I am going to attempt to set the ship on a collision course with the Stellar Degenerator. Yay! <laughs> I wow. applaud that move. That is awesome. <laughs> that is oh, wow. Fantastic. That I figure exactly if we, if we win the if we win the fight, we can always maybe come up with a plan override B. but if but for now it puts the pressure on him because his ship's about to crash there is there is everything good about that there and then, then and if that. i if i have another round after that i'm gonna try to lock him out of the system so he can't get in okay give me a piloting check oh that's interesting fortunately i'm not as good at that as i can get computers but i'm not bad at piloting either actually i'm plus 20 in piloting Oh, roll rolls a two, two though for a twenty-two. Hold on, I gotta find. I actually have a sheet for this. Uh, I lost it. Hold on. Where the hell did my sheet go? Hold, please. The dice are being very kind to us already. Okay. Here's the good news. Are you ready? Maybe. You're trying to just do a fly maneuver. You move the starship up to its speed and can make any turns allowed by its maneuverability. This does not require a skill check. In addition, because you're using the command key, 
you get a plus 10 to your check automatically for you and only you. That is a 32. It is not quite enough to do anything like a maneuver or full power or an ambitious gambit or a stunt, but to have the ship move forward towards the Stellar G Generator, it is enough. You get the responding code back, and I guess the undead doesn't recognize it as anything other than a command from the Admiral, and you feel the thrusters kick in, and the ship lurches forward. (laughs) And all of a sudden, everyone's like, it's like the Star Trek episode of everyone moving backwards, and you realize we are moving. That's great. Sarah Vox. That's your whole turn. Sarah Vox goes. That's what. And he looks at this and he's like, No! What have you done? He moves his acid towards Aeon Tuttle and casts a spell of some sort. However, something fascinating happens. At the end of his round, he becomes visible. His his um, greater invisibility has ended, as is his blur, or whatever the hell it's called. His displacement. And you can all see him. He is flying up in the air, 20 feet in the corner, with a snarl on his undead, lich-like face. And sure enough, in one hand, he has a red star plasma sword in the other hand he has a arc pistol and he is yelling no hero is up and about to die what do you do all right so did we determine that i do have this serum in my hand that he handed me or did i drink it already or that's kind of why you came over there i don't know there's no mechanic for me to actually hand you stuff did i i think i th- i think there was uh, actually... of course there's a mechanic it's a move action to hand an object from one person to another well i know that but in this program is what i'm saying oh i see what you're okay unless the two of you are a forced dyad and can pass it back and forth telepathically apparently teleporting across the galaxy if you have the force and you're a forced dyad <laughs> good god yeah I, I i it wasn't where i <sighs> akiro round a yeah, you two rounds ago, you healed yourself for 27 points of damage. Okay. So I did. So that, that's done. That is done. Oh, God. It's so annoying. Okay. So with the Starfinder backpack, it says finding an object out of that is the same as drawing a weapon. So I guess that's a move action, right? Or part of a move. That's correct. So if you want to move and draw it, you can. Okay. I think I have to do that. I really wanted to move my sphere onto him, but. I just I, I can't like I, like just the thing just his spell could kill me <laughs> that alone. Uh, so I will in fact use a move action to produce the Mark One serum, and I will drink it, and I probably will move also. Let me drink the thing first. What does that give me? One d what? One d eight. Stand by for a one. One d eight plus zero. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. One d eight. One d eight plus weeping. There we go. Not too bad. I live again. Okay, move. Well, for now. Now move where you want to go. (laughs) I'll just move a little bit that way. I don't want to get... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to... You should. I'm not going to move. You're not moving. I I, I don't want to get into... You guys look like a very nice AoE target, so I'm staying away. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm so glad Rusty is in there. (laughs) Okay, fortitude save. Oh, here we go. No! <laughs> he rolls a three. Oh, I only roll eight points of damage. You're, you're healed. You'll live. Oh, that's great. Good thing I drank that potion. How many hit points? You have six hit points seconds. left. Six. If I didn't hit drink points. that, if I did not drink that potion, I would have been unconscious. Is that do? You, is that what you would say about a machine? Are machines? Truly <laughs> unconscious. Do you Does dream a robot electric sleep? have a soul? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's dreaming of electric sheep right now. <laughs> I say my oil uh, cam is on that stump over there. Uh, Rusty's get, up. Get me my oil <laughs> cam. <laughs> hey, you know what's kind of fun about the fact that we can see him? Uh, plan A. So, 
uh, as a move action. Get him! And I say it now in a dramatic way, because let's be honest, he just appeared, and so I'm making it sound like, now everyone surge, surge, surge. Uh, but otherwise, I just say get him. But the other thing is, of course, just the usual, I shoot at him, trying to make a bluff check so that everybody has plus four against him for the round. Swarm, swarm. Uh, the get him doesn't need a roll, but the bluff check before I attack. Same one as last time. Ah, uh, well, let's test it then. All right, so that is a 42. Okay, you feel like he could be bluffed. He is confused right. by your insanity, your small-mindedness. Thank you. I have a plus four to hit, as does everybody else for this round. Okay, two things happen. One, you miss, but two, more importantly, as you fire at him, it seems to hit an invisible wall of force in front of him and doesn't even get to him. And <laughs> five, ten feet before it even gets to him, he, he doesn't even hit him. Hiroji is up. All right. Uh, he's casting... Th oh, that's the spell he cast. Okay. Okay. I don't like this wall of force business. I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Uh, God. What can you do? It's I know. What, what can you do? do? What can you do about that? What can we? What can we do about such re reckless, not wanting to take damage? Do you have you counter? Do you have dispel magic? No. no. Do you have greater dispel magic? <laughs> if, if I, I had one, I would totally have the other. Do you have super duper dispel magic? I don't know. <laughs> Check your character sheet. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking. Know your uh, character. You see, all right. So, what what other options are there? Like the the ship is lurching in the direction we want to lurch it in because I I have a pretty decent piloting. Like I could assist in piloting if I want to do something fancy with the ship while he's all force shielded behind someplace, sequestering himself. We got to deal with that acid. What acid is that? He's gonna basically direct that acid onto Tuttle. Oh God damn it! What can we do about that? I don't know. I don't see I don't see a lot of options here. I see a lot of me just kind of sitting on my ass and not doing anything this round. How um, long does that acid last? It's been around forever. It's gotten around the room. One round per level. <laughs> it lasts a long uh, time. God damn. <laughs> Might have probably got go to go through. Well, Maybe. Tuttle, stand at your station. Can you heal Akira? Now, that's the one thing I really don't have is I don't even have any of those potions that you guys are all swigging. Uh... uh Oh, you know what I might be able to do? Because I can see him now. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I try to start reading his mind and maybe get the jump on him for what his plans are next? What was that know. thing can that I was you, trying to do? Can you read minds? I mean, what is that? Yeah, I had that because because remember, remember a couple episodes ago, I was like when, when when I first realized he was invisible, I was trying to track him down. I was like trying to use that the text thoughts business to uh, to isolate him. Let's see. What was it? What was that power? Hold on a second. The tech thoughts. It's a cone-shaped emanation and will negates, and it takes three rounds for you to find out his surface thoughts. Okay, so it's one round I get something, and then the second round I get something, and the third round I get something. First round Whatever. you detect the presence. Second round you detect the number. Third round you I read see. the surface thoughts of any mind in the area. Um, All right. And there is a range. It's like 60 feet, so you might be too far from him. Yeah, I don't know if I like being that close to Yeah, him. you're 90 feet from him, so you're going to have to get a lot closer. I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you think, group? I, I don't know. Because uh, if that's a wall of force, how do wall of forces work in this game? Because I remember them being kind of nothing like... Nothing goes through them, basically. Yeah, there's nothing in or out. Like, yeah, there's no way around it. There's really no layers for it. Um, so it's I mean, they could probably like, teleport in there, but... Who would want to do that? Well, yeah, you got, you got a you got a point there. I, I actually that's that, that's funny. Like I wonder. <laughs> oh, I actually specifically can't phase shift through through a wall of force. I specifically cannot. Do yeah, that. So and says, disintegrate will destroy it. Do any of you have disintegration weapons or the? Spell? Oh, hey, there's an idea. Hold on oh. a second. Oh. Well, no, a spell. I don't think the disintegration weapons. spell. There's no weapons actually. Spell. <laughs> No, no. So, so disruptor pistol, no, nope. and disintegrator nope. pistol. Disintegrator. Nope. It has a name. It's just acid. I know it has a name. It's just oh, god damn it. Awesome. <laughs> That'd be great if the disintegrator pistol was the thing we needed. It, it, it's, it definitely has good branding, but it doesn't live up to the hype. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think I should do? I, I, I like think he should around. get within 60 feet uh, over by um, Akiro. And well, she just broke. getting sixty feet. And start oh, you know what? Thing. Actually, actually, that, yeah, actually, you know what? Actually, that's a that's actually a good idea. I think I think what I'll do actually is I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm going to uh, prepare. I'm gonna like I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye on him. I think I'm gonna get within range and ready in action. Like can like is the uh, force field? Can we know if the force field drops? It's invisible. You won't know. God damn it! Uh, all right. You know what I'm gonna do then. Uh, what is my movement? My movement is 50. So what if I go all the way up to him? Rusty, what did you attack him with? Uh, Sharon, I, hold on. What, what's the projectile? What's, what is that? That's why I'm looking it up. All right. So I am going to move up to the wall and, uh, keep my, and hold it. I can't like touch it. I can't have my hand on it. And, uh, and have my gun in my other hand. And uh, this is gonna take this is gonna take a double move to get up there, right? Or I could run. Can I run? Sure. But it was like no, uh, it's a double, double move. move. Just, just a double, double move. move. Yeah, just double move. All right. So there's no ready action at the end of that. So double move up to the wall, and I'm holding it so I'll know the second it drops by touch. Okay, you're right up against that wall, and then sure enough, you bang into it, just like time bandits. Just like a little kid at the mall. And John, to answer your oh, question, uh, solid, solid rounds. This is a good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, solid can, can rounds. I put my, okay. Can I, can oh, I put you my feel face it, up to it and then blow my mouth, and so it does that yes. thing that kids do on Windows? Uh huh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you yeah. just sort of like, no, you're. It looks exactly your like time bandits, where you're just like exactly, you're just like right up against it. It's like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you should do a, a like the raspberry make, up make, against it. Yeah, exactly, and make antagonizing so, faces. Moza, <laughs> that's, something... good, that's that's actually as good as your turn could have gone. I have to say, that's a great turn. All right, we'll always try to optimize. <laughs> All right, so Wait. Akiro, oh, I'm before, sorry. Before Mo goes, okay, go something ahead. happened. Mr. Hiroji runs up, puts his face up against the invisible wall of force, making silly, goofy faces to the undead lich monster creature admiral, and he just ignores them. However, as your ship is moving, you feel explosions coming on the side and forward. You are under attack, as in the ship is under attack. What are you going to do? Oh, um, great! I love it. I, I yeah, love so it too. Shoot, yeah, so shoot, more yeah, of they're that. shooting us. They're shooting us yes. to stop us from destroying the thing. That's right. All right. That's that's as much deterrent as you would have against a uh, kamikaze pilot. Pilot. So I am going to whip out the very last Mark III healing serum, and I'm going to throw it across the room to Akiro. In fact, okay. you know what? No, you know what? I'll just do a double move and I can actually pull it out Yes, and just do that and, and yeah, just yeah. hand it to him. Actually. Yeah, so I'm that. just... Because he doesn't take the damage till the end of his turn. So I'm, I'm very curious if Tuttle can use the fact that we're being attacked to engage like automatic like defense systems to actually get the, get the ship to start shooting the other ships now. Uh, hold on. So John moves over there. Sorry, Mo moves up to Akiro, pulls out the serum, and is holding it in his hand the last of the great serums. Although Mo ah. could always spend his turn just pouring the rest of them down his throat and just double throating him with all these serums. Can I do that while I do a double move? No, no. Next turn you could. Next oh, turn. yeah. And well. Tuttle. And Tuttle sees something that no one else sees. As Ann Tuttle is on the bridge, he sees this. In front of, let's see, so way off in the distance, the Black Winged Annihilator is slowly, oh so slowly moving forward. And in front of it is, oh, one of the ships, the Dusk Blade, it looks like, who is escorting, is starting to fire upon the black wind annihilator 
So there's two battleships directly in the way of you going towards your target, and one of them is firing at you. So here's what's going to happen. This is going to be a fun combination. First time ever of starship combat while you're in the middle of melee ranged combat. All right. It's a combo deal. So you can decide if you want to command the ship and do a starship command. You can do the old captain, engineer, gunning, pilot, or science officer. Or if you want to try to do something with him while he is behind the wall of force, at least for now, or not die, you can decide your turn. It will, this is kind of a hybrid. As of now, for this round, and this is kind of new, so I'm going to kind of improvise this a little. Tuttle can do whatever he wants. You can be pilot, you can be gunner, you can be engineer, hell, you can be captain if you want, or science officer. The Blackwind Annihilator, I will give you the sheet of what it is. You know that these two battleships eh, can probably kill the Blackwind Annihilator before it gets to the opening. So you're going to have to take care of at least one or two of these ships while you're taking care of this guy. So you have two fights going on simultaneously. Yeah, but if they kill the Blackwing Annihilator, then we win. No, then you lose because you'll blow up and I'll die. Well, we'll die, but so will all of the Yeah, so will the, the, like, they're, 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 and they will never their control best the Silver Annihilator. <laughs> No, no, they'll get uh, no, the, the, the survivors take, get the no, super just, weapon. No, yeah, they get the super weapon. They'll just take over the super super weapon. All they right. just take it over. All right, whoever wins gets the super weapon. That's basically it, look, it. It looks like yeah, like our victory conditions are destroy the super weapon or destroy them so they can't get it. I was just under the impression that the narrative was that they all these uh, Eoxians are fighting the defenses of the Annihilator. And while that's happening, um, you know, we're, we're, we're running to the bridge. So if we take out their biggest ship, I thought it would, like, help the effort of let, letting the, 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 annihilator, the Annihilator defenses win. No, the Annihilator defenses were nearly de- defeated, if you remember. It's okay. been a couple of weeks. We, yeah, I don't they, remember that. They, oh, okay. you were in the final assault. and. Okay. Um, they're just killing you. Like now, they're firing on you because, well, there's reasons if you want to find out. Uh, there's the Black One Annihilator. It is a level t- tier twenty ship. Anyone who wants to, you would use your normal rolls. However, since you weren't even close to tier twenty, your essence up to maybe tier sixteen. That's about as high as you can get. So you'll have a little limited capabilities of using some of these weapons. However, if you use that key, the command key which anyone can do, you can get a plus 10 to your rolls since it looks like you are jacking in and like doing a direct command from the, uh, from the command key from the um, uh, Admiral themselves. So it is up to you what you wish to do. Can we I'm all gonna... use the command key or can only one person? Uh, one person per round can use it. The rest of you uh, can... Well, actually, that's not true. If you all go up to it, I think you can. Uh, several of you can use it at the same time. That's correct. You can all more than one of you, but you have to actually be next to it on the bridge. And how many spaces does this uh, this juggernaut that we're this black wind annihilator move? How many sp- on? This it is axe? a speed of four, and it looks like you're about thirty-two hexes away from putting it into a collision course that will not deviate once you get to the end it will not deviate and you will be able to crash it right into it actually will enter the demi plane where the stellar degenerator is and it will go right into it and then there's no turning back once it goes down that route you also have the impressive amarda uh, or marta amada of weapons at your command as well the mass driver like right now you're facing forward and it looks like you have Mass Driver Ultra Pass Plasma Cannon, which does 96 times 10. And the Mass Driver does 2d6 times 10 damage. So you have huge weaponry. Cool. All right. Well, for the first, for now, I'm doing guns. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> of course you are. Let's clear a path. Okay. So with that, that would Are we be... moving forward, though? 
Uh, we are moving forward at a speed of four at the moment. Well, you can do what's called glide, which is that you'll just move a little bit automatically. and then. Um, but if you want to do guns, you can just, yeah, fire. Well, f- just shoot. It's just, uh, yeah, just fire one of your starship's weapons. You use a turret weapon. You can use it. It's your BAB or piloting plus your dex plus bonuses plus range. So... All right, piloting's plus 20, dex is plus 5, so plus 25 at least. Yep, so you are, so you're, you're, uh, so let's see, you have 20. Okay, so if you have 20 and it's your gunners, what's your dex bonus? Uh, plus 5. Damn. Okay, you will get a, uh, which weapon are you using? The, I'm going to start with whatever has the longest range. Okay, that is the mass driver. So you get a plus 29 to your roll. Sorry, 39 to your roll. Oh, is that all? Uh, now, mass driver does crap damage, though. It does 2d6 plus 10. There's stuff that does No, 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 no. It does 2d6 times 10. That's times uh, 10. Yeah, th- that graphic that you posted, it, it doesn't. it's not very big, on, on our, at least on my screen. Why don't you click on it? Why don't you click on it? Uh, I, uh, even... Then open original. Ah, open original. There we are. Now I'm with the program. 53. Do you exceed their uh, their armor class by a, a trillion? Yeah, you, you easily command the undead to fire onto the Dusk Blade and all the weapons fire on their aft shields give me I damage. could get you, I could get used to this so you said 2d6 nice. times 10 <laughs> yeah just for reference all right so be roll the 50. Five. 50 points of damage on the aft shields uh they're almost gone and that will be your turn Sarah Vox is like oh out there you he moves the acid onto Tuttle. <laughs> Kira's up. All right, so I'm panicking. Like Kira's like rummaging through his his uh no, backpack. No. Oh no, you sorry, you have a thing for me. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm standing there holding the the vial in front of your face. Okay, so I guess what to grab it is a move action. To drink it is a standard action. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I do that. Dang. What do I what do I get for that? Sixty. Three. 68. 68. 68. Not many, really. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that's worth big, big money. It's huh? the last one. Hey, okay. there you go. All right. I'll take it. 27. Thank you. That works. Mr. Roboto. Okay, give me a fortitude save. Mm-hmm. Give me the fortitude save. Nailed it. Yes. Jeez. <laughs> you still missed. He still missed. missed. He still Not missed. Enough. You need a 23. Not enough. 15 points wow. down. <laughs> I'm just dying here. All I'm right, just well, dying here. Yeah, you're, you're, you're drinking uh, those Mark 1s from now on. So you <laughs> you, you do stable. your, you got to eat your vegetables and, and roll your fortitude to save. Oh my God. I've missed three times in a row. I am more machine than man. Rusty's up. So my plan is uh, I am standing on the deck anyway, so I am going to shoot guns. Uh, uh, these ship's guns at enemies that are in front of us. Uh, I have okay, nothing that can you... actually hurt the boss, so why not? That's correct. So you have to use the other gun because you can't use the same one per round. So you can use... What is Ultra Plasma Cannon. You actually get to use the bigger one. Yeah, actually... yeah 96 times 10. The Ultra Plasma Cannon. All right. I like that. I like going ultra. What's your piloting? Uh, one moment. I'm just about getting in now. Is it my BAB plus piloting plus dex or just piloting? Well, no, it's whichever one's higher. Great. It'll your be BAB piloting, is 12. Sure. So your piloting, piloting is, is 19. 19. So yeah, that, there we are. So 19. So plus... you only get a plus 28. Sorry, exactly. 38. If you're going to spend That's a move right. to try to use the computer thingy and then try to also tell the undead your brothers in arms. Fire the Ultra Plasma Cannon! Sounds good to me. Uh, so I am... You're literally just rolling. Mechanically, in. what what am, I, what am I rolling here at this point? D20. A, the, just rolling D20, D20. plus 19, plus my dex of 23. Oh, so I'm, it's plus 23. Hold on. No, it's actually plus 
39. Sorry, 38. It's plus 38. All right. Well, it's a big number. It'd be more fun to actually see it rolled. One sec. Okay, then put it in. 44. And I got a 44 with that. Oh, That's he rolls disgusting. a 6. <laughs> I That's know, terrible. but okay, at any rate, it's a, it's a 44, though, so fine. Sure enough, the weapons... Oh, you didn't get to roll your damage. You don't want to roll your damage? No, I'm rolling... My, oh, hold on, hold on. I didn't... Yeah, I want to roll my damage. That hit, I guess? Oh, it hits. A 44 okay. easily hits the, okay. the, the aft shields. So give me 96. The ultra pra- pas- plasma. Yes. And anything else or just 96? Is there 96. Else? And then times 10. Uh, Holy crap. Uh, average-ish. Okay. Uh, 310 points of damage. Oh, it's, oh, it's 90, 60. Okay, <laughs> got it. All right, great. Sounds I'd good. like to point out that that would actually have vaporized the Sunrise Maiden in one hit. <laughs> yeah. And the Ultra pa- Plasma Cannon, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on. All right, 310. 310 damage. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's exploding in multiple places. It's basically the wave motion cannon just like ripped through the ship. So basically, wait a minute. Actually, it's it's sort of like well, when the Death Star actually shot at an individual ship instead of a planet, it just it just blows it right out of the air. Pretty much. Hiroji's up. Uh, Hiroji, the uh, Damaya. Uh, Iashunta Xenoseeker has had a revelation. Everybody on the bridge is doing exactly the right thing and he needs in on it. Uh, it dawns on him, the guy whose entire civilization is about status by taming trophies, realizes that if we succeed in piling this thing into that ancient artifact, he could get credit for trophies for the ancient artifact, for the boss, for every single creature on this ship, he wants that. He wants that. It'll be a, a forever monument floating in the depths of space. Oh boy, he is making a run for the uh, uh, for the for the little command thing, and wherever he can use his piloting skill, that is where he's going to plug in. So is that is that on the on the top bridge where uh, a tunnel if you, is? Yeah, if you go there, it, it's gonna you'll get a plus ten, but you can just even jack into one of those command centers next to you and do it like right near me yeah yeah oh boy that's even better all right so uh <laughs> can i dra- can i dramatically remove one of those zombies from a chair and just like yes. this place <laughs> all right so, <laughs> so totally... it buys her off of it just like in flash gordon and then you throw yeah. him on the ground and sit in his place and all right so I, I think I, I think i might need more uh, my piloting is plus 23 but i think i might need more of that but we'll find out okay well you know, you're just trying to move it forward is that all you're trying to do? I'm trying. I'm trying to uh, like. I'm trying to move it forward as skillfully as possible. Like get the most speed that I can. Evasive maneuvers. Try to avoid the thing that's blocking us. All of that jazz. Like like I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to advance the ball to get this thing at the target faster. Straightforward. Is the answer. That is full power. If you have at least six ranks in piloting, you can spend one resolve point to move your starship up to 1.5 times its speed. So you would be able to move six instead of four, which is pretty good. I, I do at least that. If I, okay. if I can spend multiple resolve points to do more, no. I will. <laughs> you, okay. and, and Seth, any way you can actually work the phrase ramming speed into your command, <laughs> I think that Boy, would actually be there, good there's, ra- there's both ramming speed, and when I get closer, there will be witness me. okay (laughs) okay so you you like throw off that guy you sit down where the zombie is and you somehow jack in you command all the undead it's like full power it's like can we give him a hundred and five percent can i get can i get a little advantage on that because of all my xenotropic like uh culture crap that i have like i Oh, you just do it. You did yeah. it automatically. You just you don't even have to roll for it. That's uh, I mean, you can if you want to have dramatic That's good. dramaticness. It's uh, awesome. I get all the dramaticness. You get all the dramaticness. You just you just basically tell them full speed. Everyone feels a lurch, and you are now doing a hundred and five percent. It's like the reactor can go that high, although it is not wise <laughs> to go that high. 
Oh, I'm fine with that. It's not. Oh, gonna, yeah. It's not going to need a maintenance after I'm done with it. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Ask them to so, bill us. Yeah. So the speed is now. You're going uh, 150 percent, and you're awesome. Uh, you are actually about to crash into the, the other ship. The dust oh, oh! If I can do that. Oh, yes. Why not? If, 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 I, if I if I if I judge that I can do that and still keep and still keep moving at pace. Oh boy, I'm totally doing that. All right, here we go. This is it. This is what I've been looking forward to for a long time. I had this in my mind for quite a while, and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to pull it off. But I wanted to combine Starship Combat with regular combat, and I felt I could do it, and I did. In fact, next week's episode is both, where they have to both juggle fighting a boss while running around avoiding AoEs and attacks and having the ship getting attacked and blowing up. And something fascinating is, is that Seth continuously tries to kind of break the rules and push the ship, and I'm going to let him. I actually let him do it, and he basically starts doing more damage and so do the other characters to their own ship by pushing it way past what it should be able to do, and I just have the ship just exploding left and right. So this is what you want. Like, if you are going to do a final episode, one of the rules is go crazy. And not just the players, but the GM. You want them to remember this for the rest of their lives. You want them to remember something that's really outrageous, whether it takes place in a really cool environment, like I had the one I told you with Seth, where we fought on a volcano against dragons, and then another character became a dragon, and then Chris fell into the volcano and saved himself with a 1% chance, and, you know, still talk about that today. So in this case, we have this impossible fight. Chris is turning into a robot. He's pretty much nearly dead. Everyone is going crazy, and suddenly they start starship combat right in the middle of regular combat and lord only knows how that's going to play out so how this is going to work it's really just going to work like everything else in the sense that i sort of made the rules that when it's your turn you can either do a starship action or you can do a combat action and really it works out pretty well because you only need to do a couple of things with a super colossal mega ship like this. You don't need to worry about all the other events. You really just need to move and fire. That's about it. You don't have to worry about balancing or doing crazy maneuvers or all that. So it's going to work really well with this combat. They only need, well, I don't know, two or three people to manipulate the ship and then two or three people to fight the bad guy or move around or heal or do whatever and it's working out really well uh you're gonna hear the whole thing next week but you can start to see how this is gonna kind of gel out if you will so one of the questions is is this by the rules and the answer is not at all in fact we're a show that almost always plays by the rules and this is completely off the rails now why did i do this there's a lot of reasons first of all i wanted it to be exciting Second of all, a lot of you know how I feel about Starship Comet. I feel it's pretty boring, but this really spiced it up quite a bit. And lastly, the pacing would have been terrible. The way it's supposed to work is you fight the big bad, and then you kill him, and then the PCs want to decide to take the ship and maybe fly it into the big bad object and blow it all up. The thing is, is that you've heard these guys they want to steal this ship and probably would have flown off and start attacking planets for all I know. Or they would have tried to figure out a way to take over the stellar degenerator. I couldn't have that. So I'm kind of forcing their hand. I'm kind of forcing them to, you know what? If you're not going to go by, quote, the script, I'm going to kind of force you to go by the script. And by making the ship move, it starts a whole chain reaction of things that they can't get out of without either... Well, either blowing up all the other ships or, you know, going into the Stellar Degenerator. But once it gets going, it sort of becomes fun. You can hear Seth is really excited that he's moving the ship. And it really turns into, you know, like a mini adventure for him. And that's something else. It's like, as long as everyone's having a good time, that's what's important. Now, I have a feeling Bob is going to be pissed because 
He has been spending this entire campaign over and over for years sending me detailed plans on how he was going to steal the Stellar Degenerator. I don't think he was ever going to be able to. I mean, come on. The thing is 12 miles long. Do you really think one guy is going to be able to figure out how to get onto this ancient super weapon that's 12 miles long? that is millions of years old and steal it? Of course not. And I didn't really want to deal with that. And plus, blowing it up is so much more fun. Now, maybe I could have gone that route. I'm sure I could have figured out something and turned into a heist. But I, I didn't really want to go that way. I really just didn't for various reasons. And I really liked the whole concept of this gigantic epic space battle you know, one of the coolest fight scenes in history is, of course, Return of the Jedi, where you have three battles going on simultaneously. You have the battle on the ground, on the moon, you have the battle in the throne room, and then you have battle in outer space. And all three are going on simultaneously. Say what you want about that movie, but those battles are awesome. And I always kind of wanted to simulate that. Now, I got two. I got two out of three. Well, in a way, I actually kind of got three battles, because we have the starship battle... We have the big bad boss, which maybe he's disappeared, maybe he hasn't. And then you have the other guys trying to rescue Akiro and get off the ship before it blows up. So there is a lot going on all simultaneously. And that is what I really wanted. And I think I finally got it. Next week it goes full chaos. You'll hear everything that happens. And oh boy, it goes nutsoid. And then it's just... Three episodes left, three more, and then Dead Sons is gone after two and a half years of playing. So sad, so sad. Well, with that, let's get to show notes. So show notes, I'm not even going to look at them. This is what you need to know. Next week, we have Three Ring Adventure, and there's going to be a new website being launched by Roll for Combat in approximately two to three weeks. I've been saying this for a while now, and you're like, what the heck is he talking about? Oh, you're going to know. Trust me, you're going to know. Everyone's going to know. It's going to be a big deal. A really, really big deal. You will see. Look on the discords. Look on the social medias. Just be aware, and you too will find out all about the new Rule for Combat website. It should be everywhere. And I think everyone who listens to Rule for Combat is going to want to participate in this new website. What it is, I will not say, but you'll soon find out that much I promise you. Anyhow, don't forget, if you want to listen to us live, just become a $10 Patreon. I post whenever we're recording on the Patreon channel, on Discord. And if not, just 5 bucks, and you can listen to everything at least a week early. And we're probably going to be putting out some other cool stuff once all these podcasts are done. Because right now I'm doing about 3 to 4 podcasts simultaneously. It's a lot plus this new website, plus other things, plus my own life, that I really got to just get this done, get through the next couple of weeks, and then I'll be able to maybe hopefully put some new stuff up on the Patreon for the listeners that you can hear that's exclusive just for Patreon people. Anyhow, with that, I'll talk and see you guys next week. See ya. You've been listening to Roll for Combat, a Starfinder actual play podcast. If you have a question or comment for the show, please visit us at RollForCombat.com or drop us a line at contact at RollForCombat.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and other social media platforms. Listening to Roll for Combat. Until next week, always remember that Magic Missile can solve any problem.